this is chaos, the state of the primordial being from Greek mythology. Chaos in this very rich and vast world of mythology is the void and is the formless state of things before existence, before the birth of time. Whether you are a history buff, a theocratic connoisseur, or just someone who likes a good story, ancient religions are fascinating in providing an insight to the development of the human condition. For years, human civilization has sought to explain the unknown. When the ancient Greeks decided to provide the world with their explanation, they created a rich mythology whose impact on our contemporary social and cultural discourse is so unbelievably profound that it deserves some analysis. Our goal here is an ambitious one. Through a series of videos, we will look into the mythology, our history, and the impact it has had on civilization. There are questions to answer. How much did this mythology shape ancient Greek and Roman people? Can the stories of the gods illuminate not only ancient concepts of love, passion, sacrifice, moral conviction and purpose, but more importantly, how these concepts influence our values today? Can we measure the level of influence these gods have had on art? And more importantly, measure how much that art has had and continues to have influence on us to this very day. To truly understand just how influential this ancient religion has been on society throughout the last 3000 years, we need to have a look at some famous and not so famous pieces of art and how it has shaped our understanding of who we are and how we interpret the world around us. So welcome to our first part in our series, an interlude with the gods. Hesiod's poem Theogony is said to have been formed around 800 BC. Like the Iliad and the Odyssey, the story was passed on from generation to generation of orators who recited the story as opposed to writing it down. So chances are that the story itself could be much older. What makes this poem significant is that it describes in detail the birth of the universe and the gods. Theogony is the book of Genesis for the ancient Greeks. So how does this universe come to be? Hesiod states that the first being to spring into existence is chaos, the void. He does not describe chaos in great detail, only to call it the abyss. When reading it, you get the feeling that it is the embodiment of nothing, a vacuous, formless state. Back to our painting. So the first thing that a learned observer might ask is if this is supposed to be the void, why is it that it is anything but empty? Why does it not convey a feeling of emptiness? What is the painter trying to convey? Well, in order to answer that question, we have to look at the painter himself. George Frederick Watts born in the 19th century, was a well-known symbolist artist. Watts painted this painting as part of his evolutionary series of murals depicting the progress of the cosmos. Painted in 1872, one has to ask what inspired Watts to depict chaos in such a fashion. A bigger question is why would he choose a Greek story? Well, Let's look into this passage in Theogony in a little more detail. First of all, there came chaos. And after him came Gaia of the broad breast 
to be the unshakable foundation of all the immortals who keep the crests of snowy Olympus. Chaos is translated as the gaping void, an abyss if you will, where time and the universe began. A far cry from its use in this contemporary form. You see, unlike Genesis from the Bible, where a supreme being enacts his plan for the birth of the universe in an orderly fashion, here we get the feeling that Hesiod is setting an empty stage for a dramatic series of events that are about to take place. Specifically, the birth of the primordial beings such as Gaia, Mother Earth, Tartarus, the underworld, and finally, Eros, desire. So if chaos is an abyss, a void, why does this painting show anything but that? Well, the first thing to note is that Watts is associated with a symbolist movement. There is so much I can say about this movement, but in summary, symbolists like Watts believed that art should represent absolute truths that could only be described indirectly. Watts himself is quoted as saying that, I paint ideas, not things. So we must cast a different eye on this painting. The first thing that strikes you about this painting is the use of the color red. Red, a prime color, symbolizes activity, excitement, danger, threat. Such an odd color for an abyss. Until you realize that Watts has captured not what the abyss might have looked like or felt, but conceptually, the moment chaos gave birth to the cosmos. This is the moment time began. So much activity, danger, excitement, plunging deep into the unknown. Red, therefore, is the perfect color to express this moment in time. Reading this painting from left to right, one notices that Watts is telling a progressive story. He captures primeval confusion by painting primordial beings struggling to escape. We see these giants trying to escape vapor and fire clamoring over each other. A true representation of today's meaning of the word. Notice this lone figure in the middle. One of the gods escaping, stretching himself across center stage perhaps representing a passage and delineating the before and after chaos giving birth. Down here we see the birth of time, represented by the interlinking bodies surrounding the new world, perhaps Gaia, that the gods will now inhabit. What is both fascinating and scary about Greek cosmological myth is that unlike many other stories we are familiar with, the birth of the cosmos was not a planned event. Hesiod does not mention a supreme being that decided that the cosmos should come into being and then proceeded with a plan to make it so. Volatility is a core theme that repeats itself within Greek mythology. And though this volatility, this unpredictability is a concept many of us find fearful, it is a prerequisite for change. A concept the ancient Greeks embraced during their golden age. Watts conveys all this in his painting. Watts envisages the gods in the womb of chaos and depicts their struggle to escape akin to a mother giving birth to the cosmos and it is up to them with their newfound freedom and power to create a new world. So what can we discern about the ancient Greek people and the view of the world that they inhabited? Well, it is this, they embraced uncertainty. 
uncertainty and desire are what gave birth to the universe. To fear or avoid uncertainty is to go against the nature of life itself. To the ancient Greeks, embracing uncertainty is the foundation of knowledge. But to then couple that with the desire to seek answers, then you have the beginnings of a new world. Socrates, probably the most famous Greek philosopher to ever live, once said, the one true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. By embracing uncertainty and anticipating change, the ancient Greeks were able to advance humanity's culture, art and technology at an unprecedented rate. Though Watts was raised a devout Christian, he was inspired by Greek mythology and was a continual source of inspiration for many of his paintings. Perhaps it was the embrace of the unknown that allured him. Regardless, George Frederick Watts captured not only the concept of the birth of the cosmos so vividly in his painting, but the underlying themes behind Greek philosophy. It is perhaps this lesson that we can take from the Greeks and George Frederick Watts. The quest for certainty blocks the search for meaning. Uncertainty is the very condition to empower man to unfold his true powers.